Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to MSTC Limited Q3 FY22 Earnings Conference Call for Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call? Please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Dipesh Kashyap from Equity Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Lizen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Equity Securities, I welcome you all to 3Q FR2 Earnings Conference Call of MSPC Limited. From the management, we have with us Mr. Surinder Kumar Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director, Ms. Vanu Kumar, Director Commercial, Mr. Subrata Sarkar, Director Finance, and Mr. Ajay Kumar Rai, Company Secretary. We'll begin the call with opening remarks from the management, and then we can open the lines for q and I now hand over the call to Mr. Surinder Kumar. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Good morning, uh, all our investor friends. I'm sure uh, you all must be uh, delighted after uh, seeing the third quarter result and uh, whatever faith uh, you have posed in the company so you will see that the results are basically coming i mean that should reaffirm your faith in the company's futures our total revenues have increased On a very, very positive note, a rise of around 67%. I mean, now I'm talking about the standalone basis. And I will talk about the consolidation basis, then the revenues have increased by around 45%. So that is taking the FSNL as well as our JV company MMRPL together. Marketing for MSTC has temporarily increased from 97 crore to around 185 crore, but this is a temporary increase because of few obligations uh, from the earlier entered contract. So now these marketing volumes will be comparatively lesser and lesser in times to come. But if we see the e-commerce, we have always been telling in all our investors, con calls also and every form that MSPC is primarily to e-commerce. So there, our revenues have grown from 137 crore approximately to more than 205 crore. That's a growth of around more than 50%. So that's a quite healthy jump. Our profit before tax has increased from 67 crore to around 142 crore. That's a jump of almost more than double under 12% jump. Uh, profit after tax has taken jump of 156%. And if you see the provisions, our provisions also are decreasing. And whatever provisions are there, so those provisions will be basically, except very minor sum, most of the provisions will be over in the current financial year. So the next year you should be able to, we are expecting a better financials as compared to this in terms of the, not only the business, in terms of the profitability also. So another uh, highlight is, I mean, our uh, subsidiary company, FSN is also doing quite well. Uh, they are basically the supporting arm of our uh, integrated steel plant because of the better volumes in the steel plant, FSNL, and of course certain operational efficiencies at their end. They are also doing good. So overall, the combined profit for the company, the combined revenues for the company are very, very robust. Uh, we, are, we have undertaken, apart from the spectrum auction, uh, which we conducted the last year, uh, this year, perhaps the spectrum auction will not be there, but uh, the next financial year spectrum auction again will uh, get us good traction. 
apart from that uh, some other agreements that we had done they are gaining traction now if you see the uh, property option of npas for uh, public sector banks uh, last year the volumes were not that good this year the volumes as well as the earnings are robust from that so that is gaining transaction uh, tra traction now and you must be seeing various ads in the newspaper wherein lot of npas under sarfaroshi x are being sold by banks uh, we are also exploring new business opportunities in uh, various areas and uh, trying to reduce our dependence on scrap chain although scrap is one big area with the uh, emphasis on green steel these days uh, because the melting of scrap will always consume much less energy much less uh, natural resources so that also is gaining traction so of course msc we hope to get benefit uh, from that apart from that i mean uh, property sale is one area where we are getting very good business so uh, with these uh, few highlights i'll hand over to our director commercial so that she can apprise you for that uh, thank you jindika Uh, good afternoon to uh, sorry to interrupt uh, we are not able to hear you clearly okay is that better now much better thank you yeah yeah so uh, good afternoon to all of you uh, as our cmd had already i highlighted this has been a very good uh, nine months for us in terms of our performance in e-commerce so uh, during the 9 uh, months uh, ending december 31st uh, the volume of uh, around uh, 1053.28 billion in terms of value of goods transacted through the e-commerce and marketing verticals which is about 110% increase over the same time last year the revenues have increased by about 45% uh, it is now at 69.94 million in the first 9 uh, months and uh, this was around 48 crores uh, 4824 million in the 9 uh, months of 2021 uh, pbt uh, is around 1676.39 million compared to 759.34 in 2021 now all this could be possible mainly because of certain key uh, projects that we did Uh, and also certain uh, inputs and uh, the e-commerce activities in certain sectors. I'll just highlight briefly on those. Uh, we have done the 13th tranche of gold mine auction auctions, and uh, this has uh, around 88 coal mines have been projected. This is in an ongoing stage. Auctions are still going on. So the actual uh, benefit of this as to how much. exchequer will gain and what will be the revenue to the company within the coming months we have also conducted you know sale of uh, pond ash which is actually a form of fly ash only for various plants of uh, ntbc across the country and now this has gained a good volume and uh, this is a sustainable business for the time being so we have sold about 176 crores worth of uh, pond ash and uh, we have earned about uh, 1 crore or so as service income uh, we have entered into an agreement with the lic corporation for disposal of their various uh, you know uh, materials uh, that lie across various assets uh, in of lic in the country uh, we have also started uh, done a very small pilot project for share sale of unlisted shares for uh, andrew yule and company which is a government company out here and this was successfully sold in the first attempt itself now uh, many of the coal blocks uh, that were allotted in region times in the last few years have already started production and many of those companies in the state government as well as private sector have are utilizing our services for sale of such coal and iron ore also so odisha coal and power is one such company with whom we have entered into an agreement and we have we will be conducting one event per month for sale of their mine coal we are also in talks with other companies uh, for sale of coal as well as iron ore uh, kerala forest department has sold some sandry wood during this uh, last quarter and uh, that has also gained some substantial revenue for the state 
uh, major mineral blocks two of them have been uh, put to auction and successfully sold in the state of karnataka some more are in the pipeline now uh, apart from that as uh, cmp sir had said uh, the mpas of the banks are also um, uh, you know being sold through our portal and now the uh, model has more or less stabilized and uh, the volumes are coming in now one major factor because of which the revenue is uh, quite appreciable is because of the increase in sea prices that has actually um, ended up in increase in the scrap prices also also the iron ore both in terms of volume as well as the prices has substantially gained over last year and because of that our revenue streams were really good because that's on a percentage basis uh, the, the service income is on percentage basis and the number of coal auctions that we are conducting which again is uh, uh, a stable business for us that has also increased in the last 9 months so because of these factors contributing majorly to e-commerce the revenues are quite good and uh, as already said the marketing uh, activities are slightly uh, are slowly being closed down especially the uh, two models and uh, in after probably this year after the fourth quarter there will not be much of uh, activity in that segment so we are fully committed to focusing on the e-commerce activities with new products and business models thank you good afternoon everybody uh, so let us now uh, discuss about the financials so first of all standard on financials uh, for the nine months comparison what we are doing as compared to 2021 to 2122 our total revenue has increased from 2445.31 million to 4092.39 million that is a jump of around 67% uh, supported uh, by ebita pre provisioning uh, from uh, 1094.33 to 1697.92 that is a jump of around 55% provisioning has gone down from 348.41 to 200 17.86 so contributing to pvt pvt has gone from 671.06 to 1425.11 which is a jump of around 112% and pat from 345.62 to 887.49 a jump of around 156.78% and thereby eps from 4.91 to 12.61 and cash profit jumping from 714.86 million to 1134.92 if we look at the segmental part uh, then we can that uh, revenue from e-commerce has grown from 1369.16 to 2056.65 a jump of around 50% uh, the break up e auction in sale uh, 1174.28 has grown to 1807.20 e procurement has grown a little bit slight uh, later uh, 74.10 to 43.50 and other from 120.78 to 205.95 although uh, revenue for marketing has gained little bit but uh, it's a one time phenomena and we are already as discussed uh, we have already tapered it down and with that uh, profit after tax has come up from 345.62 to 887.49 now let us look at the consolidated result that is result of a group as a whole here where the total revenue has grown up from 4824.98 to 6994.83 that is a jump of around 45% and ebita has grown up from 1331.82 to 2109.24 that is a jump of around 58.37 provisions it is down by 28% from 360.17 to 266.98 share of jv where also jv has shown a positive side and uh, from uh, red it has uh, converted into black uh, that is a uh, loss of 12.462.67 profit and with that uh, pvt comes to 7594.342167.39 a jump of 120% and pat has jumped 178% from 371.33 to 1031.57 and combined eps again has jumped as a 178% from 5.27 to 14.65 and the cash profit has jumped from 874.76 to 1439.71 and uh, that's a uh, that's a uh, total all from our side uh, 
And now, uh, hand it over to you. Uh, should we open up for questions? Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from Kash Kasturi from Focus Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations uh, on a fantastic quarter. Uh, sir, I just wanted to understand uh, the vehicle scrapping business. Uh, so, for example, what is the cost of setting up a center? Uh, how many vehicles uh, can be scrapped in a year? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, have the government's the vehicles started getting scrapped? And uh, is this uh, line of business uh, working capital intensive? And uh, what is the roles and responsibilities of MSTC and your uh, JV partner? So whatever uh, information you can share would be most helpful, sir. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you see, the investment as we invest us in this is quite heavy. Uh, as the, the government of India is uh, laying great stress on vehicle scrappage, so what we believe is when the large number of vehicles come, then we will need a shredder uh, that just costs around uh, something around 70, 80 crores. So those, uh, that kind of costing will be there in these uh, centers. But uh, right now we are not incurring in that kind of cost because the number of vehicles that we are getting is comparatively much less. You see, the policy has recently been issued by the government of India. Uh, the state, state governments have uh, yet to notify their policies. So once the policies are notified, and people get some sort of incentive and disincentives. I mean, uh, as far as the disincentives are concerned, those are linked with the uh, this uh, fitness centers, which are uh, likely to be coming by, let us say, end of 23 for one class of vehicles and end of 24 for, uh, uh, I mean, FY24 for second another class of vehicles. So we, what we believe is that uh, uh, the traction is yet to come and uh, the state governments uh, are, whatever discussions we have, they are slightly reluctant in providing some sort of incentive. A uh, center is pursuing with them. So it is going to take uh, some time for the, basically the vehicle, I mean, vehicles to come. Uh, uh, the private vehicles also are uh, not that large and government vehicles also yet have uh, uh, not shown much of the basically traction in that. Uh, as far as we are getting, uh, I mean, uh, whatever the capacity we have set up, uh, it is uh, basically we are not able to utilize those kind of capacities as of now. So, so that is why uh, presently we are not investing that heavily in these. I mean, in in one center, but. We are trying to open number of centers with less capital so that the business doesn't suffer much of the losses. That is why in uh, three, four years, we have got slightly, uh, I mean, we are almost on break even now. This is just because of our uh, slightly lesser cost in uh, uh, plant setup, which we have gained from our experience. Uh, regarding your third question about the uh, roles and responsibilities of both JV partners, here uh, uh, we have entered into a I mean, JV agreement with them where the roles are very clearly specified. But one thing is very clear here, that day-to-day -day operations and total, in fact, uh, the, our second partner, Mahindra Interstate, has, they have got total 
basically freedom as far as the operations are concerned there is no interference from any side uh, regarding their operations and most of the business decisions are be being taken in the board meetings with complete consensus on both sides so what we we believe is uh, what we have seen is just i'll say a small trailer and the when the full picture comes that would be a good business for us and also a good sense for the country also to get the scrap as much as possible uh, put out the old vehicles of the road for helping improve the environment also yeah thank you uh, sir a uh, follow up question uh, so you so uh, so can we understand that the operations day to day operations would be taken care by uh, mahindra uh, for all the centers is, is that the understanding sir yeah all the centers okay. uh, and uh, if i may ask another question uh, sir uh, uh, you know uh, in the e-commerce side of uh, business uh, are you seeing any impact of the talent attrition sir thank you mm, yeah i mean uh, we have seen we are seeing something but not uh, that large as in private it companies are there we are seeing some attrition but not that significant i mean it's, it's not so significant to impact our business or operations thank you sir i'll come back in the queue okay thank you next please thank you the next question is from the line of dikshit doshi from white stone financial advisors private limited please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity uh, am i audible yeah yeah so uh, congratulations on a good number uh, my first question in the e-commerce segment so uh, you know you mentioned that the scrap scrap prices were good and uh, also uh, in other than the scrap uh, in iron or also we have a percentage of uh, sales as a service income uh so uh, can you elaborate uh, what percentage of revenue comes as a percentage of revenue and what percentage of e-commerce revenue is a fixed uh, you know uh, fixed price uh, revenue uh actually the revenue model for each product or each service is defined by the roles and responsibilities that msc has to undertake so uh, if it is a very complex kind of a portal then there are some fixed charges as well as uh, percentage charges but if it is a very routine kind of a thing as in the case of iron ore that's why i mentioned iron ore it's a percentage because it's a very uh, normal kind of uh, very stable model which has been there for almost 8 10 years now so it is very difficult to say that which product has which kind of revenue model uh, it is a combination of both yeah but let's say uh, let's say in current quarter our revenue from e-commerce is around 80 crore uh so uh, is it fair to assume that more uh, around 50 60% of revenue would be percentage of uh, revenue and rebalance would be fixed price see as i said a bro broad percentage number will be fine no no see uh, if you see sub segment of e-commerce scrap and iron ore will be on percentage basis but the rest of it is a combination so it is very difficult to estimate the percentage like that Okay, and how much would be scrap and iron ore of the total revenue? Scrap is about forty to fifty percent is our total earning, and iron ore, okay. as I said, uh, the last quarter was last nine months were very very good, and that's why it has seen uh, quite an impressive performance. But uh, that may not be the factor every year. This year, that has been okay. the major factor. Okay. Okay. okay my uh, second question is uh, you know now uh, uh, this uh, last quarter in q2 we have mentioned that the risky receivables uh, which you used to mention around 100 crore has come down to 25 30 crore so how much it would be now uh, can you repeat your question uh, so in q2 call uh, you have mentioned that the risky receivables from the a uh, marketing segment was around uh, 25 30 crore only uh, so has it come down further uh, 
Yeah, it has come down substantially. Now what we are left with is just about uh, 13 to 15 crores, which uh, will okay. be uh, you know provided for in the last quarter. Okay, so from next year onwards, uh, whatever receivable would be there would be either uh, e-commerce or in marketing, it would be 100% uh, BG back, right? Yes, that's true. Okay, and uh, this quarter, uh, you know, in standalone operation, we have around 11 crore of other income. So is there any one-off or it's a normal uh, treasury income? Uh, basically, let me answer you. Uh, basically, the other incomes are generally uh, not a standardized type of thing. Uh, it keeps on fluctuating, but uh, we hope that uh, uh, this uh, type of uh, revenues will keep on going. But of course, uh, it may fluctuate. It is not part of our operating income. Okay, but this quarter in 11 crore, uh, it's more mainly interest on uh, our treasury or is there any one now? Pardon? Uh, this quarter, the other income was 11 crore. So it's mainly the interest income on our cash book, uh, cash balance, or is there any one-off income in this? Basically, basically, it's a mix of all. Basically, we have certain okay. uh, dividend income also, certain uh, treasury income also. It's a mix of mixed bag. That much I can say. Okay. And last question from my side. Uh, any update on uh, sale of FSNM? Uh, so, uh, yeah, Government of India has already taken uh, a concert decision and in the, uh, that uh, particular EGM we have taken a consent of the shareholder also. We all are aware we have uh, given this particular uh, stock exchange also. So, the process is now triggered in and it, 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 is, uh, it is on the track. So, as, uh, as, 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 well, as and when the new processes and all these things are happening, we will uh, let you know uh, through our uh, bulletin in the share uh, the BSC section. So we will let you know. Okay. All day. Okay. Okay, that's it from my side. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manbadhar Bed from Laurel Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, so just wanted to understand on the e-commerce side, uh, since we are into multiple domains on the e-commerce side, so could you give us a breakup into which segment contributes how much in terms of revenue to us? And uh, uh, sort of maybe even if you could give a breakup of the segments which you see uh, sustainable and which are kind of, uh, you know, maybe a one-time kind of an income. So that will help us understand this business a little better. See, in uh, e-commerce, basically we have a uh, scrap sale, which has been our uh, forte traditionally. Uh, uh, we are also into e-sale of coal, iron ore, and a uh, lot of other products like uh, the blocks, assets, forest produce, where a lot of minerals, etc. And uh, we also have a very customized e-procurement portal, uh, which has not gained much traction because of uh, the uh, presence of GEM. Uh, as far as scrap business is concerned, I have been saying repeatedly, the income is about 40 to 50 percent total revenue of e-commerce. Out of that, about 40 to 50 percent is from scrap sale. Uh, then about 20-25% uh, is from e-sale, but uh, this again is a combination of fixed price sale as well as uh, percentage basis. As I said, this depends on what kind of service we are giving. And uh, e-procurement, uh, we do not uh, envisage a big growth in that area. So uh, as far as scrap is concerned, this again is linked to the steel sector. If the steel prices go up, the scrap prices also go up. And uh, since it is a percentage basis, then uh, because of that, the revenue will also be good. Now, iron ore and coal are such things that, uh, you know, the market forces decide as to uh, how they will perform. And uh, regarding our customized portals or other uh, minerals and all, again, uh, it depends on uh, the market economics. So uh, the basic breakup is uh, 40, 40 to 40, uh, 50 percent uh, from scrap, 
about 20 to 25 percent from e-sale and the rest from other uh, revenue streams. This Fair is enough. a breakup, and uh, we are now more focusing more on this uh, e-sale business because properties has gained some traction now. Fly ash properties and a uh, lot of raw materials we are selling. And earlier, some of the raw materials of private sector was being sold directly by them, but now they are also seeing some value in our services, and uh, increasingly they are utilizing our services. So maybe in coming years, the e-sale uh, segment will go up. Well, no. uh, uh, this bit that you mentioned about the private sector seeing value in the services that MSTC provides, can you uh, sort of elaborate this a little more so that we can understand uh, what is uh, it that MSTC brings yeah, to yeah. the table? Yeah, Jindal, Jindal Steel is one such company who has uh, utilized our services for uh, sale of iron ore. We are in talks with uh, certain Tata Group companies also. And a uh, lot of people who have uh, taken iron ore and uh, coal blocks and other mineral blocks have approached us. But uh, the we are still in talks, and so I cannot reveal more names now. No, so uh, but, uh, Jindal, is, uh, yeah, Jindal is one such company who has uh, reports faith in us. So, ma'am, uh, not looking at names at all, what I want to understand is that uh, what is the USP that MSTC offers to a private player? The largest uh, buyer base and a very transparent uh, system. It's very user-friendly and a uh, very transparent system, uh, which uh, people see uh, to be good for their business, for their sale, and for uh, sustained uh, you know, uh, sale of uh, material, raw material. Buyers also see that uh, you know, uh, it's uh, quite easy for them to buy material through our portal. You see, I'll, I'll supplement what uh, Madam has said. You mm -hmm. see, uh, whenever principal comes to us for selling this product, uh, mm -hmm. he's sure that uh, he will get the best prices. Right? When a buyer comes to us, mm -hmm. he will he is assured that uh, I mean uh, the products that our uh, platform is offering. Mm -hmm. So he will have the large quantities. Uh, all over India, wherever the iron or scrap properties, what, whatever is available, he will find. So we have basically a crucial mix of uh, buyer and seller. Apart from that, as Madam has said, is the user-friendly interfaces for the buyer as well as seller. And other, another thing that uh, find uh, assurance with the, especially the government sector is the complete transparent process and uh, quite robust uh, systems. So uh, we are keeping the security of the system in quite uh, high. Uh, we we are I mean high security for the system, so that uh, our systems are safe and no uh, no uh, nothing uh, uh, I mean uh, adverse uh, kind of uh, comments have. I mean even the courts and every at all the phones. Our portals have stood every kind of scrutiny from the CAG, from the, uh, from all agencies, even the courts, where, wherever the, some cases, some bidders have gone against in the, uh, in the court, for some region or other. So <laughs> the courts have also reports safe in the MSTC system. So it gives a comfort to buyer as well as seller and the best price for both of them. That is one USP of the MSTC. That is why the people are coming to us. Yeah, okay. thank you. All right. And so one last uh, question from my end. Uh, uh, so can you give us an update on uh, the agriculture side? Jevic is a platform that we have. How is that doing? And uh, what do you see uh, the future for that particular? Uh, delicacy, the challenges are uh, still there, especially in terms of uh, logistics and connecting to the, uh, the farmers as such. Uh, we are still working on that and the uh, Ministry of Agriculture has also put in a lot of efforts in this area. We are trying to onboard more logistics service providers and once they are in place, uh, maybe it will gain some traction and we will be able to transact some volume. But as of now, it is not much. Okay. Fair enough, ma'am.
Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is on the line of Harsha Jain from Ra Investment and Advisory. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations to the whole team for such a fantastic set of numbers. Uh, coming back to the previous question from previous participant, uh, I just want to know that, uh, as you mentioned that, um, your e-commerce business consists of 40 to 50 percent share from scrap market. So if the steel prices and if the scrap prices go down, so do we expect a degrowth in revenues for e-commerce? No, it doesn't actually mean that there will be a degrowth in revenues. Uh, because the volumes, the amount of scrap that is being generated, that is still there and that is going up. So even if there is a small fluctuation, the volumes will make up for it. Okay, so are we doing anything else apart from scrap to increase the market share from other segments? Yes, actually in scrap itself, we are trying to rope in as many private sector big companies as possible. And uh, newer models of business are also being seen as to, you know, if we can bring in more aggregators uh, for uh, the scrap business as such. Maybe we will uh, be able to, uh, uh, if not uh, grow the business by leaps and bounds, at least sustain the levels that we are in. Okay, so since we have grown 25% from quarter on quarter on the e-commerce front, so can we expect a 80 CR plus quarterly e-commerce revenue going forward in for, for, for the next financial year? Uh, actually, that will be difficult to say because this last quarter, as I mentioned, has been uh, the main contributor has been uh, INO sales, uh, which was very, very good, both in terms of volume as well as in terms of prices. So now that has slightly dropped and stabilized. So I'm not too sure whether so much INO will be mined and will be uh, put up for auction. So it depends on the I know mining companies and uh, uh, the prices, what will be the prices in the next year. So um, it's very difficult to say at, this, say at this stage. But we have other things lined up as well, uh, such as NPA auction and uh, yeah. enemy auction. They are there, the NPA auctions are there, the coal auctions are there and uh, other minerals also and uh, more and more uh, you know private players are coming for sale of their minerals so those things are there but it will be difficult to say whether it is going to be 83 crores or 100 crores or 50 crores what i can okay. say is the business is sustainable the models are sustainable but the volume uh, the market forces will decide okay and one more question would be regarding the Dividend payout. So this quarter we paid a dividend of 6.5 rupees, which translates to almost 43 to 45 CR, which is almost like 100% of our profits for current quarter. So can you throw some light that why there is such a huge jump in dividend payout ratio and will this be a new norm going forward? Uh, you know, you know, the, the, there was a long, uh, well, after we got listed, huh? The first year there was uh, no dividend at all, if you can remember. And uh, our uh, management and the board uh, felt uh, not. Uh, I mean, they felt that the investors should be rewarded, and they have, they have showed returns, uh, faith, uh, and confidence in our uh, company. So, as an engineer to that particular thing, and uh, it is it is because it has been thought by the management. So, let us uh, have some kind of uh, reward for our investors who have uh, shown such a keen interest in our company. That's the philosophy working behind that. So that we, uh, and, uh, we are hopeful at because the results are very good. So that is, uh, that is also the driving force for the, such a high dividend. So what will be the dividend payout ratio for maybe financial year 23? You see, I mean, that, that cannot be uh, presented as of now. But I will uh, say one thing, and uh, in supplement uh, to what our DF has said here, our the model of business is so that uh, uh, the investments required is not that large, right? Yes. So most of the investments that we are making is in our JV company, right? So right. we'll, we'll be always, uh, I mean, uh, uh, having enough surpluses so that to reward the shareholders. So that is what we. 
We expect as on date. Okay. I, I think uh, I have replied your queries, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you so much. And one last question would be: Can you uh, provide some um, insight on cash on books at the end of December thirty-first? Yeah, because you know, you know, you know, uh, December, you know, uh, as far as the study guidelines, we are only drawn up our uh, PLs and all these things. So uh, we have to wait uh, till uh, the March result. But that much I can, we can say that from our company side, we are. a uh, better place and uh, you can see from that uh, cash profit that we have shown you uh, that uh, there is uh, enough uh, uh, sustainable cash for the company as of now okay and one last question would be can we uh, expect some kind of big revenue from for next financial year from scrapers thing so you know you know uh, it, you know the, as you see that in the uh, console results that already the company has come up from the uh, red to black that shows uh, shown profit so but that will of course uh, be, uh, uh, any payout from their side will depend upon how much uh, uh, i mean investment is required no no i am i was asking that uh, how much centers can we expect by end of next financial year and how much revenue do we expect like probably 500 cr 1000 yeah. cr so, so i think uh, the, uh we are trying to expand the pan india and we were just waiting for the response of the government policy as uh, earlier in this con call our cmd has already highlighted the state governments are yet to come up with their uh, corresponding uh, guidelines in this regard so as and when this is coming up we will be doing but we are ready we are poised for uh, pan india growth and uh, we can have uh, at the back end call we can immediately go for uh, this expansion so we are ready for that that much we can tell from our side okay thank you so much and all the very best for future thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We now have the line for the management reconnected. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, basically, I was uh, uh, saying that uh, the investors have kept faith in us. We are working very hard, and our all our employees are working very hard to provide best services. All stakeholders in the our portal, our e-commerce services, and uh, uh, we hope to further better our results 
in the coming times and uh, the faith that investors have kept in ca our company we want to give them good return thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen on behalf of equity securities private limited that concludes this conference call we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you